Hello and welcome to episode 3 of Yarnoon Dev Devlogs. I really should be doing these more often, because, as always, there's a lot to talk about. Now, last, uh, last time I did a devlog, I was talking about changing to... For, uh, about using a first-person view for the, uh, for the character. Now, that, that part didn't actually work out. And what I ended up doing... Oh, well, I clicked on it straight away. Was making the game third-person. Now, the reason for that was because this, unlike a FPS, this particular game will uh, will not be featuring uh, guns at all. Uh, and that means I wanted to include a little bit more in the way of hand-to-hand -hand fighting. And th to do that uh, the, the way I wanted to, I would have had to have had a full-body view of the player uh, uh, yeah, in the first-person view, and that proved to be a lot more difficult than I was able to do for various reasons. So what I've done now, just to run this game, is the player is now fully third person. So I'll just take you through where we actually are here, and I'll try and explain what I've actually been doing as well. There's our stalker. Right, so you see, oh yeah, just because I, I started in there because I'm working in this area. Now, as you can see, we have a lovely third person view of Mr. Carwin his name. Right. Yeah. And he can run, jump, and walk, and they also added a basic a basics of the combat system. Like I said, I wanted to include the hand more hand-to-hand -hand combat. So it's a little bit raw at the moment, but this is more or less where we, where, how it's going to work. Yeah, I need to, inc to improve the dodging. There's no animation on that yet. Um, the sta uh, stamina and health system is again working perfectly. We've also been working on the UI. Uh, you have seen my videos on this. So, if, if, if the player, you can see there, he, he picks up his phone, starts looking at it when you open it, and all the UI were done through his, through his smartphone. You see. Click on the apps, and you have the game, full game controls, settings. And you also have his actual phone. He has his his messages from his uh, girlfriend, and they'll also be. I haven't, I haven't added this unknown sender yet, but what, I, what will be happening is he will be receiving. The messages from this uh, mysterious unknown sender throughout the game. Also, uh, this note system, I'll mention that a little bit more later. Uh, camera it doesn't do anything at the moment. Also, added this, uh, little, uh, you can see this lovely little background photo there, which I made up using my characters. And what you can actually do is you can cycle through his phone's gallery. Oh, the little picture is his uh, girlfriend there, and you can set any picture you want be the background of the phone. Easily. Just leave it. He's drunk a night out with his friend. Still set this original one as wallpaper. That was the one he liked. And we also, uh, we also worked on this inventory system. You can see you have a full in working inventory here. And Let's go into the cabin. I've worked on making this cabin a little bit, uh, a little bit dirtier and more rundown as well. So I added some, uh, some foam debris, some, uh, some cobwebs, some, some mold growth. And you can pick up, this, you can pick up the first aid kit, and they do actually work if you use them. And you can pick up almost any item. The way I've set it up, I can basically just drop any item into the map and get it and make it work. Make you make a pickup. I was also working on this morning. Is this little note system? So you can pick, so if you approach a book now, you can open it. That's the relevant story to the to the plot. And, 
before, I did have three loaves of bread in here. That was that was part of the uh, the myth of the Lake Maiden, which you'll be seeing here in a moment. Get in. Uh, we need to sort out this FPS. And you can pick up this knife now. Oh, the suicide note, yeah. So, as you can see, different font, different sizes, and different colours. I can easily change that in my little... Oh, and you picked up the rusty knife. You can also, what you can also do now with the inventory is you can equip, pick up your rusty knife, and equip it. There you can see it. You can see it around there. That's more or less what I've been doing with the uh, <coughs> with the inventory. How does that work? Okay, because I made that all out myself. You can see the canvas basically has a picture of, of, of the phone, and it's the phone panel, which is set active when you enter into it. Various different pa uh, different smaller panels that all have their own little functions. No service, yeah, there's no service where he is, battery gorge and all that sort of thing. You also, do you also notice the tooltip panel? We're, uh, we're putting in dialogue in there for now. I hope to. Uh, I am hoping to add uh, uh, voiceovers at some point, so I'll be adding some uh, uh, some actual voice dialogue to that. But for now, for now, uh, knowing that there's <coughs> just just kind of writing the script so if, uh, that way to see how it works. Right now, what I've also been working uh, a lot of work on is the first creature, the first being here that, that can actually kill you. Now, if you remember from my character building, from my character building episode, I made a, a, a whole series of these things. Now, the Lake Maiden herself, she, her race in Uma actually caused me a, big, a bit of a problem. Firstly, it added an entire gigabyte onto the download size just for just to add her on, and that was a little bit much. Also, her, her Uma race actually crashes the uh, the build. There's something up about the downloads there. So what I had to do with her was I exported her into her as she is into Blender, which gave her a solid model, re-rigged her bone structure, and to play around with the vertices and everything and the materials, and then managed to re-import her back into Unity as a solid model. And now, this is how this is how it, it, she actually compares. She's a little bit different now because um, she's. But I mean, her eyes look a little bit more dead and bloodshot. Added some added a little ghostly hue to her, and a little, some effects on her hair. But she but she is now alive and in the game. You may have. You may have actually seen. Oh, where is she? Yeah, let's just jump in. You've actually seen the videos on this. I'll, take, I'll explain what is actually going on here. I've done, I've done a few other improvements. Yeah, I've got to sort out, uh, out this FPS issue. We do uh, frequently get comments about the FPS and that you need to optimize your game. And actually, the game is only using 20% of my CPU power. So that's fairly well optimized as far as coding goes, and it's using about two gigabytes of RAM, which is what I'd, about what I'd expect for this sort of game. It's uh, the only real problem is that it's pushing my integrated graphics to 100% just to load it. So we're going to have to work on that soon. Until until then, I have to put up with low FPS while I'm developing. Right, here she is. You hear her singing? I'm trying to work on the 3D audio there and make the spread a little bit, a little bit more natural. It's actually a, record, a recording that I took off free sound and added some echo, some uh, ghostly echo to the sound. As you can see, he's excuse me, miss, can you help me. And then, oh my God, she dead. Yep, that's no, that's not a ghost. That is literally a dead body. And so you go and poke her. I don't know why you run. I probably wouldn't poke her, but, but he did. Oh, gosh. She falls over, 
and uh, at that point they'll probably oh. just starts giggling and can get tough. And her, her first little bit of AI, where she actually where she walks towards you now. So, I actually like her, her, her effect. I've been told I should make her more ghastly, maybe maybe add some blood, some seaweed, but I actually like the subtlety of this. And if she goes pointing to you, she's actually pointing to something. Some hue, maybe see her hair, a little, uh, little, little shading effect they added to her hair. Now, what? When you, when you approach her, this part, this was in the video. In the, in the original video I posted. Oh, she does that every now and then. So if you go, if you approach her, but you get this. Why is she doing that? Well, she. She tends to do that when you when you do the wrong thing to her. You can't actually hurt her, but this is to stop people from you just move closer to her. Because if you try and hit the poor, the poor ghost, she does that to you. Why doesn't he kick? system is working there. It's just um just, 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 now get to now get to do that. Use here we go, that's better. But yes, she can uh, the, if you keep doing that she will kill you. What's you go? Get back here. You know, rather than having to fight her in, the, in her case, there will be there will be combat and I have but that's why I made the villagers. But um, uh, 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 this uh, particular lady here, she won't uh, she won't try to kill you unless you attack her. Which she probably shouldn't do. Oh, there's a puzzle to solve with her. Where she moved. Mm, oh, I did use. Uh, so, since she actually does it, do it. I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do this to show you the uh, what happens when you when you die. You should need one more, maybe. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, you can you can now die. Yeah. All, all working well. And I'm, I'm quite happy to uh, to do a full guide into how the inventory system actually works. But for now, I'll just give you a quick, a very quick rundown of. Uh, What's actually happening? Now, now, the bag has to actually exist somewhere. The bag of items, and that exists in a script that's attached to the canvas. You know, quickly, very, very quickly, run through uh, through this. The way it works is you've got the uh, this class. You'll notice this public class here is not a mono behavior. That's because this is a more standard object class, so uh, which contains. All the, uh, 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 the description, item type, use and a few booleans, these sorts of things. Now there are eight slots in your inventory. Empty is actually contains an item called an empty item. First aid kits are a special item, and will all, uh, so item number one will always be a first aid kit. What happens? And the reason why I've done uh, created that way is because I've then got the inventory script. Here, which is a mono behavior, now on st on start creates a new a new inventory. You see, inventory item. That's the script above. It creates an array of, of those called inventory. Eight inventory items, and at start cre it simply creates eight empty items. Now, when you let save and load, it will be. Um, well, actually, it makes item number one one single first aid kit, or item zero because computers count from zero, and then seven empty items. You, uh, use first aid kit. There's a script of its own there. Add first aid kit. Now these check for empty. Well, that's you. That's used in the item pickups. 
where it simply checks and returns true true if there's an empty if there's an empty item, false if there is not. You can also search for a slot number, a free slot number. I'll we'll probably amend that so it searches for a particular name as well. Then each item pick up, pick up, pick up. Each item that needs to be picked up has it has another script on it called the inventory script. Public, which has all those public variables. And I'll show you a little bit how this works now. When you pick it up, it simply goes into the inventory and adds to that particular. It checks free slot them because you've already on um, mouse button up if you're within distance. It checks for empty and then picks it up. We where are we? Look at look at the item. Transfers all the vari all those variables to, to to the empty slot number, and and tells you your little tooltip. You picked up the item description. Oh, I didn't mean to open that. Let's go over to. Let me jump over to that knife. I'll show you what's a little bit. Oh, oh, spider. You see the knife has the pick up item script on it, which simply add, adds this description, info, these rusty knife pictures, a picture of it, and which icon is to be which icon is to be used. And it's like the item type is gone. Uh, item type is weapon. That also fixes what icon is used. Similarly, we have a similar script on all these notes. The read note script. Which sets well, on the suicide note, which is a which is a which is a bit of te which is a text file, and I, which I can set the font, font color, font sizes, all those little things. And I can do it all pretty easily now once it's all written. As you can see from the, from this oh, where was it? Read note script. It more or less, work, it works very similarly. You click on it, or you click nearby it. Read within distance. Read note, which opens the read note panel, which is a canvas panel, title, text, and reads the variables on there in, on, in, into the into the canvas screen. Uh, is there anything else I need to explain? A little, ex a little quick explanation of what the of what the Lake Maiden is actually doing. You see, you saw this in action. Now, she starts by setting a few behaviors, and if you touch, if you touch her, you now this this is why that that little first intro walk falling over and walk towards you only will only happen the once. So you start. So when you click on her the first time, start co-routine touch, which is a very long script. She stops singing. Raises your heart rate. You, 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 then you pick it. Then it's actually a pickup where he puts his hand on his shoulder. She, so she falls over. I literally just set her rigid body to uh, to freeze rotation false, and that makes her fall over. Add a little bit of force so she falls in the direction I want. Makes him jump, freeze rotation. Then she get then play plays another animation of getting up. Changes her singing to laughing. Looks at you. And animate and uh, see a lovely, lovely, eloquent wording from uh, from the main uh, main character. She then wait, wait, waits. There's a lot of various wait times in between all these things, and she starts walking towards you in your in your general direction before reaching out to you and then standing there doing nothing. Should you now after that you've got, got a bean touched? That means she's that means you've already had that uh, that uh, start co routine of touch her, and you then if you click on her any other time she just yells at you, which is a, a simpler one. Changes to a demonic. Uh, she has a, a halo, a red halo. Sets your field of view so your vision gets a little bit blurry. Turns to a demonic scream. 
yelling, um, that's just playing her animations. Makes your heart rate go up, your health go down. See how simple it is once you've set all these things up. It did really takes one or two lines. And then, then returns to her original state. See, you know, when that changes your heart rate, that looks very simple. When it, sorry, when it changes your health, but what it's actually doing, camera control, is when you change your health, swim, depth, death, heart, you've got all the, you've got this whole long script here that's actually going through. But once that's written, it's the cool thing about about, uh, about methods and procedures. Once you've written these things, thereafter it takes microseconds just to put in a little reference, just health subtract. When his health reaches zero, he will die. So I can do that any time. Anything can cause that. Anything can make his heart rate jump. Um, I, I think that's about it for today. I don't want, to, want this to drag on forever. So, uh, if, you, if you want me to do a full, uh, a fuller uh, guide as to how to create an inventory like that, I'll be happy to. But uh, for now, well, I'll see you next time.